I've got an initialized patch here and I want to look at the sound source zoom in this video. So I'm on layer A and I've got the default synth waveform here, but I'm going to go to sample mode and I'm going to click here and just load something in. Now I'm going to load something from the Trillion library because a lot of the features in the sound source zoom don't really pertain specifically to most of the Omnisphere samples. So let me just load something in here. I'll go to acoustic bass and I'll load one of these up. And it's going to take a while for it to load in because these are huge sample sets, often well over a gigabyte in size. And a lot of the parameters in the sound store zoom are applicable to this. So this video is mainly for people who own Trillion. There we go. It's over a gigabyte in size. So I'm going to close this up and we're going to click this little zoom here to get into the sound source zoom. So I'll just play it for you. So it's a lovely sounding acoustic bass sound source. Now, the first thing we have here is the ability to mix the sub layers. We have different mics. We have, for example, a mic and a direct pickup, so I can hear one or the other, blend them to taste. And we have a power button and a mute button for each of these layers. Now, the difference is that when we turn off the power, we're actually freeing up the memory. You can see here it's unloading samples, and when I turn it back on, it's loading them back in. When we use the mute button, it's not freeing up any memory. It's just muting that particular sub layer from being heard. So important to understand that. Now we have special articulations section here, and these pertain to legato samples and release samples. So let me show you how this works. You can see the notes I'm playing on the keyboard here with no legato mode enabled. Watch what happens when I hold a note and then play another one. They both play at the same time. Now, when we enable the legato sound source, we can set a specific interval. And within that interval, we'll hear the unique kind of hammer-ons and pull-offs that basses use. So for example, I have this set to a major third. Watch what happens when I hit an interval within this. When I play the second note, the first note is cut off. And then when I release, that second note, the first one is heard again. It's kind of like a synth solo mode that we looked at on the main page when we looked at this solo function here, but it is polyphonic. Now we can set the interval here, and when we play outside that interval, the behavior will be as normal. So when I'm outside of that range, we hear the regular two notes. Now we can also choose a release sample to use here. And when we're using release samples, it's important not to use sample thinning, which we'll look at in a moment. But basically the release sample is what happens when we take our finger off the note. And normally the release sample is associated with the main sample source, but we can change them. We can set the release level here. I'll put this really loud and I'll put a different one so we can really hear something different. One of the funk basses, they have loud releases. So you can mix and match different releases from different actual legato sounds. And we can set the level here. And this is pitch tracking for the release samples so that it'll track the keyboard or not. And the transition time determines how long the legato sample overlaps into the release sample. And this is all the way up. You might hear a little bit of them both overlapping. Let's try another one. It's a subtle effect, but that's what it does. Sample thinning works similarly to what we looked at in the browser with one or two little differences. So we can set limits to how many round robins are used, but we can optionally have it ignore the release samples for the round robins because they take up very little memory. So you can limit the round robins, but not the release round robins. We can limit velocities based on these criteria like we've looked at before. And legato samples, it's important to have no limit on if you're going to be using the legato mode. And if you're not using it, you may as well load in none just to save up some memory. And pitch thinning and training works similarly to how we looked at it before in the browser. And there's also a limit key range button, which will limit the actual range of the instrument. And there's only a few of the newer Omnisphere 2.0 instruments that utilize this. And finally, we have an info pane over here, and this gives us the most info available on a sound source based level. Click the sound source zoom magnifier icon and we're back out to the layer page. See you for more in the next video.